Hi everyone, welcome to Deepu's Chemistry. In this class, we are going to discuss about an important electroanalytical technique known as polarography. And in this session, we will go through the basic principle of polarography and the assembly of polarographic instruments and the half wave potential as well. And at last, we will see the echoic equation. So these are the four points that we are going to discuss in this session. First of all, we can move to the basic principle of polarography. Now, coming to the basics, this method is developed by Jaroslav Harowski, and this method is used for the qualitative and the quantitative analysis of electroactive elements or groups. It involves the measuring of current flowing between two electrodes as a function of voltage. So what we are doing here is that we are getting the current voltage relationship of an electroactive species. That is the requirement. The material that we are going to investigate should be an electroactive species. It should respond to the current or voltage. And we will apply a particular voltage and the observed current is measured and based on this, the calculations is made. That is the basics of uh, polarography and two types of electrodes are used here the first one is a working electrode or it is a micro electrode and the second one is a reference electrode so these are the two types of electrodes which is using here and the observed graph the current voltage curve it is known as polarograph and one of the major assumptions made by Jaroslav Harusky is that here the slowest rate determining step during this procedure is the discharge in the discharge of ions is diffusion for a particular reaction to take place at an electrode surface the rate determining or the slowest step is assumed to be diffusion diffusion means the diffusion of ions from the bulk of the solution to the electrode surface so that is considered as the rate determining slowest step okay now coming to the principle again what we are doing is that we are applying a negative potential, a gradually increasing negative potential is applied between the polarizable and non-polarizable electrode and the corresponding current is recorded, just like this. It is based on, this method is based on concentration polarization. We all know concentration polarization, how it is arising. It is due to the concentration gradient at arising due to the diffusion of ions from the bulk of the solution to the electrode surface thereby making a concentration cell and it will form a concentration polarization and a concentration gradient will be generated between electrode and the bulk of the solution the concentration will be minimum near the electrode surface if the reaction is taking place and will gradually increase in passing from electrode to electrolyte and after a certain distance it become equal to bulk concentration as shown as pqr when you are looking at this graph here in the x-axis it is shown the distance from the electrode surface and in the y-axis it is given as concentration so what we are observing is that as we move from the this is your electrode surface as we move from the electrode surface the concentration is increasing increasing all the way and then it reaches a constant value at the bulk of here it is the bulk of the solution where the concentration is assumed as C0 and uh, the concentration at the electrode surface is taken as C so these two terms should be taken care of. C0 is the bulk concentration and C is the concentration at the electrode surface. Okay, then. Here P is the concentration at the electrode surface and R is the concen bulk concentration. Here R is the bulk concentration, P is the concentration at the electrode surface. This PQ or the gradient PQR can be taken as equivalent to this linear gradient PS. So this length PQ or this length can be assumed to be equal to this linear length PS and the distance from this Y to S is known as diffusion layer because in the polarographic concept what we are assuming that the rate determining step is the diffusion step. So this is the area where diffusion is going to happen. After the diffusion the co current will remain constant that's why it is shown like this. Okay. so. This is the, the distance from Y to S is known as the diffusion layer. And we need to calculate this rate of diffusion from the bulk to the electrode surface. And this rate of diffusion DC by DT 
across the layer ys is given by dz by dt is equal to ad by delta c0 minus c where a is the area of exposed area of electrode surface d is the diffusion coefficient delta is the thickness of the diffusion layer and we all know c0 and c c and c0 are the ionic concentration of the electrode surface and the bulk concentration okay now assuming equilibrium we can say that this rate of diffusion of ions towards the electrode surface is equal to rate of discharge of ions by the current now how we can do this approximation how we can calculate this rate of diffusion which is given by equation 1 this rate of diffusion is equation 1 so next we need to calculate the rate of discharge and rate of discharge can be calculated by using coulomb's law one uh, we all know one farad current discharges 1 gram equivalent of the ion and the nf uh, coulomb will be associated with the discharge of 1 mole of an ion where n is the valency of the ion we all know about this suppose if you are depositing copper 2 plus 2 farad is required if it is aluminium 3 plus 3 farad is required just like that so this value of n will give the number of moles of electrons involved in the discharge of ion and if i is the current and a is the area this rate of discharge of the ion is equal to i by nf so rate of discharge is i by nf rate of diffusion is ad by delta c0 minus c and at equilibrium these two are equal so we can take this as i by nf is equal to da by delta c0 minus c and this equation 2 is written by assuming that the ionic species species is brought to the electrode surface and discharged only by diffusion that is the assumption that we have made because diffusion is the only way that the bulk the ions from the bulk can be reach can reach the electrode surface but there is other chances this cationic species can also be carried by convection as well as electrolytic transference these are also the chances but we need to eliminate these two chances how we can do that that is what we are going to do at next the convection can be eliminated by keeping the solution unstirred if you keep the solution unstirred the convection can be removed but the problem with the transference, uh, transference will be still there and we need to account for this method this transference method as a, a way to carry the bulk ions into the electrode surface so we need to add to this rate of diffusion term da by delta c0 minus c the transference also and this transference is given by t plus i by nf where t plus is the transport number of cation being discharged i is the current nf n is the number of electrons f is faraday so we can say that the rate of discharge i by nf is equal to rate of diffusion plus rate of transference convection can be removed so we need not to worry about it and now rearranging this this uh, transport number term can be taken to the left hand side and uh, rearranging we will get i is equal to dnfa by 1 minus t plus delta c0 minus c and here the t plus is the transport number of the ion which is getting discharged so what about 1 minus t plus 1 minus t plus means it is the transport number of all the other ions which are not going to discharge so t plus discharge means 1 minus t plus is not discharged so that is given by t t is the sum of transport number of all ions other than the ion which is being discharged that is given here now how we can eliminate this transference is that by using a supporting electrolyte in the case of supporting electrolyte if the electrolysis is carried in presence of an indifferent electrolyte what is mean by supporting electrolyte? It's, it's an indifferent electrolyte whose ions are not discharged at the applied potential then almost the entire amount of current will be carried by the ions of the indifferent electrolyte such electrolytes are known as supporting electrolytes so the we all know the transference number that is the portion of the current carried by a particular ion and if you are adding a supporting electrolyte of highest concentration all the almost all the uh, voltage that we are giving will be carried over carried by this supporting electrolyte thereby unaffecting the electroactive species so if you are adding an excess supporting electrolyte we can take this transference t as one because the ion that we are considering is not carrying any uh, charge so this t can be taken as one and the equation will be dnf i is equal to dnfa by delta c0 minus c or on rearranging i is equal to or dnfa by delta can be replaced by k so k into c0 minus c which on rearranging gives 
C is equal to C0 minus I by K. Now, since the concentration of the ion which is being discharged in the immediate vicinity of the electrode is C, the actual reversible electrode potential according to the Nernst equation we have E is equal to E0 plus RT by NF log C, where C is the concentration at the, at the immediate vicinity of the electrode as we have seen earlier. Now, when no current flows, the concentration of the key ion, key ion means the ion which is discharged, in contact with the electrode is same as the bulk concentration because when the when uh, the actually the current is flowing then the discharge will is going to happen if there is no current flow then the concentration of key ion in contact with the electrode is same as the bulk concentration and the reversible electrode potential of the electrode will be given in such a case as e0 is equal to e plus rt by nf log c0 according to Nernst equation because c can be replaced with c0 since the surface uh, the electrode uh, concentration of the electrode surface is equal to bulk concentration so c0 so c can be replaced by c0 which is a bulk concentration now rearranging we can have e, e0 minus e is equal to rt by nf log c0 by c where c is taken as 1 so that's it c, uh, c0 by c and this E0 minus C, E0 is the reversible one, E is the observed one. And the difference between the EMF, and the difference between these two is the concentration polarization delta E. So delta E is equal to RT by NF log C0 by C. Now, we are substituting this equation 13 in our equation 9. Equation 9 is uh, C equal to C0 minus I by K. And if you are uh, using that result, equation 9 in equation 30, this C0 can be re sorry this C can be replaced by C0 minus I by K and the equation will become RT by NF log KC0 by KC0 minus I okay now and the equation is written here now what you have when I is small when the current is small we can say this KC0 minus I will becomes uh, large and the denominator getting large means fraction will be small and log of that term can be taken as delta i will be small and is approximately equal to i okay so as the current increases so when i is small this uh, term log term will be low and if the current is increasing and if it is reaching the value of kc0 what is happening if i is equal to kc0 this term will be zero so this will be something by zero which is infinity and it will be the delta v will be we sh should theoretically increase to infinity according to this equation but in actual practice delta e does not increase to infinity it increases only to a finite value until the discharge of another cation that's the only thing that is going to happen because delta e concentration polarization cannot increase to infinity but according to this equation it is increasing the current density at which the rapid increase of potential takes place is called limiting current density that is shown here as JD because it is the current density at which the electrode potential is increasing quite rapidly this is the area where electrode potential is increasing rapidly and the current density is constant there and that is known as limiting current density okay and this limiting current density a current can be written as ID and this why because this limiting current is produced only on upon the assumption that the process is happening here is diffusion that is id or diffusion current is equal to dnfa by delta c0 dnf by delta c0 and this current is known as diffusion current because what we are assuming is that the ions which are discharged are brought to the electrode by diffusion only so if the ion is getting discharged we can say the concentration at the electrode surface that is C will be zero right because if the ion is getting discharged then the concentration at the electrode surface will be zero and then when you are comparing this equation 15 with the equation 7 equation 7 it is given as I is equal to DNFA by delta C0 minus C so when I becomes ID only if this C will become zero that is this. I approaches ID when C is equal to 0 when you are comparing equation 7 and 15. That is when the concentration of key ion at the electrode surface is 0. Now, 
the magnitude of current density is such that all the ions which migrate to the electrode surface get discharged instantaneously and in such a case the concentration at the electrode surface will be zero and the concentration gradient becomes equal to bulk concentration because the concentration at the electrode surface will be zero now since the concentration gradient is maximum and constant the rate of diffusion will be also maximum and constant and that value is known as limiting diffusion current Dif diffusion current will be maximum and constant and that is limiting diffusion current now this is all about the principle of polarography now we are moving into the polarographic cell assembly how the apparatus is set up i told you it is a current voltage relationship so simply you are giving a voltage you measure the current that is the basic thing but you must have a cathode anode and uh, current measuring voltage measuring instruments some all such things so what is happening here here the most important thing is in the polarographic cell assembly is a dropping mercury electrode which is given here and a saturated calomel electrode a ce and the solution to be electrolyzed so these are the three main things it should have then in order to remove the transference one molar solution of a suitable supporting electrolyte is taken in the cell and is deaerated by passing pure nitrogen or hydrogen through the side tube this is what happening here supporting electrolyte is taken to taken care of the transference and is deaerated by passing nitrogen and deaeration should be done otherwise the dissolved oxygen begins to reduce at dme this dropping mercury electrode is dme and other if you are not deaerating this the oxygen will begin to reduce which interferes with our work now what is happening is that pure mercury from this dropping mercury sorry this reservoir r is allowed to fall through the test solution at the end of the capillary tube this is a capillary tube and it, it is passing to the test solution drop by drop each mercury drop which is held at this capillary tube for 2 to 3 seconds acts as the cathode here which is the cathode the mercury dro drop at the tip of your capillary when and one one drop falls the second takes its place that is going to happen okay so which is your cathode so drop of mercury now so there will be continuous renewal of mercury drops now in this cell it is connected to calomel electrodes which is your anode through a uh, frit a and with it, this one will be your anode the saturated calomel electrode will be your anode this calomel anode and mercury cathode are connected to this battery positive and negative poles of this battery now this is your experimental setup now the next step is you need to apply the voltage how we can apply the voltage by easily varying moving the uh, sliding contact d along the potentiometer wire f this is your potentiometer wire and if you are moving the sliding contact across this the voltage will be varied and it can be measured it can be measured and the current strength can is measured by means of galvanometer as the voltage is varied the current is measured by galvanometer g and then the potential of the cathode can be calculated how because potential of this anode saturated calomel electrode is constant and we are getting the total current from this the potential of the cathode is easily determined by subtracting the potential of calomel electrode from the applied emf so from the you know the value of applied emf you know the value of saturated calomel electrode electro potential and by subtracting these two will get the potential of the cathode and now which are the types of electrodes which is used the first one we have seen is dropping mercury electrode it is a micro electrode and is a working electrode and the working electrode is often a drop suspended from the end of the capillary tube and this mercury drops form at the end of the capillary due to gravity and that it is your polarizable electrode and what is the advantages of this dropping mercury electrode its surface is reproducible smooth and continuously removed because as soon as one drop is fallen another drop will take its position so it eliminates any surface poisoning effect and also mercury forms amalgam with many metals which lowers the reduction potential and decreases the tendency to redissolve so reduction potential value will be decreased upon forming amalgam with mercury 
the diffusion current assumes a steady value immediately after each charge of applied potential so diffusion current will be assumes a steady value after applying the potential and the large hydrogen over potential on mercury renders possible on the deposition of substances which are difficult to reduce like alkali metals al3 plus mn2 plus we, we all know this uh, having negative values of reduction potential but if you are using mercury the all these things can be reduced now coming to the limitations the first limitation is that the mercury can be too easily oxidized so this cannot be used for oxidations and the capillary cannot be used over 0.4 volt because mercury dissolves and anodic wave is recorded since it can be easily oxidized and also it cannot be used if the applied voltage is less than minus 1.8 since hydrogen will be liberated and also there is a chance that the capillary is difficult to maintain since dust or other particulate matter can block the capillary because the capillary the drop at the capillary is acting as the cathode or if it is contaminated by any particulate it can be cannot be used now the next topic that we are going to discuss here is half wave potential what is half wave potential when you are obtaining what you are obtaining is this current voltage relationship and the graph with known as polarogram will be something like this the first on increasing the potential the current will increase only slightly then after a particular potential the current will began to increase at a rapid rate and then it will current will become constant that is your polarogram and the limiting current corresponds to the concentration of the electrolytic species so from calculating this limiting current it, it the concentration of electrolytic species can be calculated and here when you are looking at this rising portion this rising portion means the current is increasing quite drastically in this area and the potential at the middle of this rising portion is known as the half wave potential the the potential at the center of this rising part of the wave is known as half wave potential e half which is a particular for a partic uh, particular characteristic of a particular major so upon calculating this e half you can identify which is the ion responsible for this polarogram so this e half can be used to study the uh, element or the compound present or electrolytic species present in the common which is the element or which is the compound present now consider this reaction oxidized plus reduced sorry n, n electron giving reduced species here ox means the substance is which is getting reduced this is the oxidized species which is getting reduced and reduces the product reduced species is your product now upon applying the nernst equation we can say e cathode this is something which is happening at the cathode so e cathode will be 0 minus 0 0.0591 by n log reduced to 0 by oxidized 0 over this this constituents at the thin layer surrounding the microelectrode are in instantaneous equilibrium with the electrode surface. So the electrode potential is given like this. Where this zero subscript, this is reduced to zero, this is oxidized zero. Zero subscript denote the concentrations apply only to the film of the surrounding, the DME which acts as cathode. So it is actually the surface concentration, this reduced to zero and oxidized zero. And when you are applying a voltage, it is equally distributing between, or it is distributing between the cathode and anode. So E applied can be taken as E cathode plus E anode. Because applying voltage is given both to the cathode, mercury, and the anode is CE. Okay. Now, the anode is saturated calomel electrode. So we can say that this E applied is equal to E cathode. E cathode is given by this equation 16. E anode is SCE. So we can substitute this to give equation 18. Which on rearrangement, this E is CE can be taken to the left hand side, so equation 90. Now, suppose in this reaction that we are considering, it consists of only oxidized form of the species. Oxidized form is present, so it will begin to reduce on applying the voltage. So, it will begin to reduce means the oxidant concentration will decrease at the electrode surface. Right? So, at the electrode surface, when this reaction is happening, the oxidant concentration will decrease when you compare it with the bulk of the solution and that will produce a concentration gradient because concentration change is already formed there because at the electrode surface oxidized species concentration is low and at the bulk con oxidized species concentration will be high so that will produce a concentration gradient which will give a concentration polarization 
and the observed current at the supplied voltage is I is equal to K into oxidized minus oxidized zero. So oxidized zero is the electrode surface concentration and oxidized is your concentration at the bulk and K is the capillary characteristics. And at the diffusion current, the concentration of the oxidant at the electrode surface is zero. So this is oxidized C is zero, where at the electrode surface it will be zero. So we can say this oxidized zero can be taken as zero at the diffusion current. So ID when diffusion is happening, as soon as the diffusion occurs, the reaction is going to occur. So when I is replaced with ID, we can remove this oxidase because the concentration of the electrolyte species at the electrode surface will be zero. So K into oxidized. Now equation 20 minus 21 will give you I minus ID is equal to minus K oxidized zero, which upon rearranging gives oxidized zero is equal to ID minus I by K equation 22. Now, similarly for a reduced species, we can have I is equal to current is equal to K dash reduced to zero or reduced to zero is equal to I by K dash. So we have 24, equation 24 and equation 22 here and it is applied to this equation line where you have reduced to zero and oxidized to zero and these values are getting substituted there to give you this result. E applied minus E is, e is equal to E0 minus 0 0.0591 by N log i by id minus i k by k dash and upon rearranging or, or uh, we can say upon expanding this logarithm log a log log a b is equal to log a plus log b it can be given like this now upon applying the condition of halfway potential we can say halfway potential is the potential at the center of the rising portion where the diffusion current is half so we can replace this e applied with the e half when i is equal to id by 2 because from this graph, this graph we are seeing here, this is the this is the middle portion. I hear the diffusion current is half because this is your full diffusion current, and this at this point the diffusion current is going to be your half, and the potential corresponding to this point is your half wave potential. So E can be replaced with the E half when I is equal to I D by two. And we are substituting this I terms with the I D by two. This I D by I D I D minus I D by two will be I D by two. And this i will be id by 2 and this will be log 1 and this log 1 is 0 so this term will be cancelled. So e half is equal to e s c e plus e 0 minus 0 0.0591 by n log k by k dash. Now so that means the half wave potential is a constant which depends on the standard potential of the redox system and is independent of the concentration of the electroactive species. So this is your equation for half wave potential and this term does not have any current it is a constant right it does not depend upon the concentration of electroactive species that's why it is used to for qualitative analysis for the detection of the element which element is for the qualitative detection of the element now this equation 27 can be utilized in equation 25 because e half is given as e c e plus this term so you can replace this term with the e half so E applied will be E half minus 0 0.0591 by N log I by ID minus I. And this is the equation of polarographic wave. This is the equation of polarographic wave. And we are plotting a graph between E applied and log ID, log I by ID minus I. You will get a straight line graph with an intercept of E half and a slope of minus 0 0.0591 by N. So from calculating the slope, we can calculate the number of electrons involved. And by calculating the intercept, you can get the half wave potential. So half wave potential is the potential that we can also say E applied is equal to E half minus this term. So when this term will be zero, we can say E applied is your E half. When this term will become zero, only when I is equal to I D by two, right? When I becomes I D by two, this term will become zero. So we can say lo when lo in the halfway potential is that uh, occurs when the log i by id minus i is equal to 0 or when i is equal to id by 2 and now coming to the last topic this is the echovic equation this equi echovic equation is used for the quantitative measurement halfway potential is used for the qualitative analysis and the echovic equation that is a uh, given here it is used for quantitative measurement about the amount of the particular element present in that sample and according to the Sikovic we can have the diffusion current density is id is equal to 607 n d raised to half m, m raised to 2 by 3 t raised to 1 by 6 c 0 
where id is your diffusion current n is the number of electrons d is the diffusion coefficient of the electroactive species m is the mass rate of flow of mercury t is the type drop time c is here is the bulk concentration and these terms n d raised to half m raised to 2 by 3 sorry n d raised to half c 0 is de determined by the properties of solution and m raised to 2 by 3 t raised to 1 by 6 is the capillary constant determined by the characteristics of the capillary and this quantity is m and t depends upon dme and the pressure exerted the diffusion coefficient is the measure of rate at which a given species diffuses through a unit concentration gradient and it is highly temperature dependent and it changes by about 2.5 percentage per degree so if you increase the temperature by 1 degree the diffusion coefficient will be increased by 2.5 percentage so for accurate work temperature in the polarographic cell must be controlled to plus or minus 0.5 degree so this is all about the polarography that i am going to discuss here we have discussed the basic principle of polarography then we have seen the cell assembly then we have seen the half wave potential which is quite important and also the echoic equation which can be asked so this is all for this session thanks for watching this please subscribe this channel if you want to watch much more videos that will be uploaded in due time thank you